Light winds and sunshine are forecast for the Akea Ultim Challenge Breast race start later today. The six intrepid skippers who will compete on the first ever solo multi-hole race around the world, the Akea Ultim Challenge Breast, are expecting light winds and some winter sunshine for their send-off from Brest on Sunday, when the 24,220 nautical miles race starts 13.30 hours local time. The northeasterly wind of around 10 to 12 knots will scarcely be enough to power the 32 meter by 23, 105 feet by 75, flying multiholes, onto their foils to get them flying, and indeed the first hours are likely to be more about finding the strongest strands of breeze, as they head out onto a relatively benign bay of Biscay, heading for Cape Finisterre, some 340 miles away. But while the winds are likely to be quite modest, the stress levels will be high from the start. A low-pressure trough, with no wind at its center, is lurking off the Portuguese coast, representing the first opportunities for a leader to jump ahead, but conversely also being the first feature where any losses could have long-term effects. The long-term objective is to be first onto the train of eastward-moving low-pressure systems in the Southern Ocean, and any initial losses on these high-speed, giant ultims can be problematic on this course. And a much bigger low-pressure trough is out in the Atlantic, which has broken up the prospects of any trade winds to take them south towards the equator at high speeds. Veteran weather rooter Marcel Van Trieste, who advises one of the favorites Amel Leclerc, Bank Populaire, and has the longest list of honors, on round-the-world races, and records, cautions, it is pretty tricky to get down to the Cape Verde, because winter is arriving and you get a blocking situation, and lots of low-pressure systems mid-Atlantic. You can go there, but it's upwind. And if you go too far it gets wavy and windy, or you can stay east, which is tricky, with little lows forming in front of the Iberian Peninsula, which could be upwind or downwind, depending on 50 miles difference. So that is somewhere where you could be left behind, maybe even if you have issues, and that can have consequences which persist until you get towards the Southern Ocean and, say, the Falklands. He adds, what you really want to be doing, is making sure that at the entrance to the Southern Ocean that you are in the right carriage, on the train of lows going east, and you are not left behind. That puts the onus on this beginning to make sure you don't miss something at the Cape Verde that would make you miss the carriage. And then there were six. The battle against the clock to have Tom Lepertz, Blue Hold SVR Lazatig, race ready, a challenge which has gone on since late November when structural damage was discovered after the Transat Jack Vab was finally won this afternoon when the ultim of the race's youngest skipper, docked in Brest, taking her place alongside the five other ultims with less than 24 hours to go before the start gun. It was a visibly emotional Le Perch who was greeted by a huge, noisy crowd, in the beautiful winter sunshine. When Tom Le Perch, and his mean-looking all-blue ultim SVR Lazatig, finally docked on the Akea Ultim Challenge Brest's race pontoon at the Ocean City's K Malbert, the 26-year-old French skipper momentarily broke down and shed the tears of one who has already won what must rank as the, the most significant race of his life. After discovering structural damage to the front starboard side of the crossbeam when the Ultim returned from the Transat Jacques Vab, there started an incredible race against time for Le Perch, team principal Francois Gabart, and the entire SVR Lazatique Khmer concept operation, to have the boat fully ready to take their place on Sunday's start line. That race against time was won this afternoon. They left Kankano around 08.30 hours this morning, and SVL Lazatig took her place at around 1500 hours this afternoon, neatly shoehorned into her waiting space, in front of a huge, partisan crowd, who cheered, and shouted their best wishes, to the youngest sailor in this first ever solo multi-hull race around the world. Bravo Tom, we are with you, you've got this, thanks for getting here. Members of the crowd called to him, and the team in the afternoon sunshine, at less than 24 hours before Sunday's 13.30 hours start. Le Perch said, I'm super happy to be here with the other five. It's going to go in quickly until noon tomorrow, but it's incredible to be here. The work that has been done over the last few weeks, has been truly fantastic, just incredible, he bursts into tears. There aren't many people who could have made it here like this for this departure. But we have always believed in it. The way it was done, it's just wonderful. I am really, really, moved, on the eve of leaving, to take on one of my childhood dreams. 
of the passage and the sail to Brest today, he said, I felt good at sea. It felt good to sail, to skipper the boat, to take control of what I know what and how to do. I focused on finding the right compromises in terms of settings. Unlike those who have been at the pontoon these past few days, I already have my bearings. And I also took it easy because you shouldn't burn out too much energy on the eve of the start. About the repair he said I have no doubt about the quality of the composite repair. It was made by a great team, and in terms of quality, we couldn't do better. I am confident that I have a boat ready for this race, and in the end, it's not going to change anything about how to start the race, how to manage the start, because we're going around the world. We didn't sail much but neither did the others. And looking ahead to the start of the race, and the first few days he said, from now on, we will focus on the weather for the first days of the race, and the strategy. It will be light at the start, and that's nice, but afterward, there will be a lot of sequences, maneuvers, and things will play out like that for a long time. The passage time will not be great to the equator but perhaps we will be able to do better afterward that and maybe even better than 42 days, Francois Gabart's record. But that's not the important thing. What matters is being at the start and having a great race. On his last night on land, I'm going to bed pretty early, and I think I'll fall asleep quite easily. But in the morning, at the end of the night will definitely be a little more difficult. On his show of emotions, he said, I expected that really because it's such a big thing which has been achieved by the whole team around this trimaran. It's really a big, big thing, after four years of design, a huge amount of work, the involvement of lots of people and today, it's me who is going to skipper the boat, with such a big support team, a lot of people who are with me. I know that tomorrow will be difficult to live with. Even on Solitaire du Figaro starts, I sometimes got quite emotional before starting, but then went on to be first at the clearance boy, and then winning the start. I can do that again.